kind of, sort of, hot off the heels of me concluding my look at the Transformers Beast Wars Predacons, we get Wave 5 of the Transformers Studio Series Deluxes come into play. In fact, it was only recently we got Wave 4, and today we're going to take a look at this guy from Wave 5. It is the Deluxe Class Crankcase, and he's going to be our focus in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Bolton, a.k.a. GotBot. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe, stick around the channel, have some fun with us. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, and me everywhere. And this is the Studio Series Wave 5 Crankcase, which really, really is just a reuse of the Crowbar Mold. Although, for Crankcase, what we probably should have had is not the crowbar mold, but the berserker mold. This doesn't really look like a crankcase, though it does look like a dread. Nevertheless, is this potentially the best use of this mold yet? Well, we're about to find out when we head over to the table, you, me, and Lewis. That's right, Lewis. Everybody is coming over to the table. You should join us, my friend. I'm talking to you, Lewis. As we take a closer look at this guy. And while this is not the G1 Triggercon, who indeed did turn into a Jeep, we have in front of us Crankcase. It is Studio Series number 30, and I am sure that this is going to be the best use of this mold yet, right? Well, <laughs> we're going to find that out, but before we get into the figure, let's take a quick look at the packaging first. And yep, that's quite a box. Uh, we have a picture of Crankcase down here? And we have another picture of Crankcase on the side? Hmm. We have Crankcase over here? You'll notice I'm saying all of this like I'm questioning it. And there's a reason for that. And of course we have the product stuff on the back and his little one-line bio of how, you know, I don't know, he's a Decepticon dread and he doesn't stop coming after Autobots or something like that, whatever. But I'm questioning it because this isn't Crankcase. It looks absolutely nothing like the movie character. The movie character looks more like Berserker. Um, actually, it looks pretty much exactly like Berserker. Maybe with some gold dreads, but like that's, that's about it. It doesn't look like this. This, it's nice art, but it is completely new, completely for this packaging and for this repaint. We'll talk about that more as we go forward. Instructions, they're pretty lousy, you know, they are what they are. A uh, goofy, awful melee thing that we've seen before a couple times. This time it's in a, 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 a bronzy gold, I suppose. Um, it's no better or worse than any of the other ones. I, I don't like these things. And of course we have the whole backdrop scene thing. If you want to use it and display it, if you have the room. And we can put... I guess crankcase in there. Right now he's in vehicle mode. You could obviously put him in robot mode. Um, you know, okay, nice feature, you know, nice feature. And here we have three of the same vehicle. Uh, same alt mode across three characters here. Of course, in a line here, we do have Berserker, we do have crankcase, and we do have crowbar. I hear we're getting uh, hatchet out of this mold. Uh, that should probably be interesting because where he's a, like a four-legged character rather than bipedal. And truth is, this mold may work better for a four-legged creature. Um, a lot of people have said to me, hey, if you don't really like this mold that much, then why do you keep punishing yourself by getting it again? Because I want the whole group, and I do think that the alt mode looks great, and I do think that the robot mode looks great. Uh, this is a nice, this is a nice group shot. I dig the alt mode. It's just getting there is a nuisance. And at this point, you can see that they are all pretty much the same thing. This is how they look, uh, of course, on the front. I'll show the back. And as you can see, they look pretty much the same there as well. And this is the side view. And I'm not going to show the other side because it's the exact same thing. However, it's worth noting here that the crankcase actually has two unique aspects. The first 
is his like melee thing. It's a gold color as where the other two are kind of dark. Also, you will notice right here we have a Decepticon logo. We also have a Decepticon logo up right there, kind of on the front fender. Crankcase does not have that on either side. So he is unique in that respect. Nevertheless, like if you want kind of a sheer body type and a cohesive look, I mean, the Seekers are famous for it. Reflector has been famous for it. We have, uh, you know, the Prowl, Sideswipe, Smokescreen characters that's famous for it. Uh, the, uh, no, Prowl, Blue Streak. Prowl, Blue Streak, and Smoke String characters famous for it. The Sideswipe, uh, Sun Streaker, and Red Alert characters are famous for it. This isn't the first time that we've seen a group share an alt mode. Uh, I kind of like that the, you know, the Dreads are seen as like a group of thugs, and we're getting that group of thugs all done in the same sort of aesthetic and it looks nice. Granted, it's not G1, although I'll point this out, even in G1, Crankcase does turn into like a Jeep thing. It, being a trigger kind, he does turn into like a Jeep type of thing. Now, I've already shown the conversion going from robot mode to vehicle mode. When I looked at the earlier use of this mold, that being Crowbar in episode 391, so, this time around, I'm going to do vehicle back to robot. And I even said in that earlier review that going from robot to vehicle is harder than going from vehicle to robot. It's a lot smoother going from this mode back to robot. As such, I'm not really going to give scores right now. We'll see them as we get back to robot mode. But this is how the vehicles look. I think it looks great. Uh, the paint apps are just as fine as they were any other time. I, I wish we had a Decepticon logo there, but I can, I, I can live without it, man. I'm okay. I'm alright. I'll survive. Nevertheless, I think that, you know, at least four out of five Lewises would agree that this looks like a good-looking trio. That's right. Four out of five Lewises. Lewis B. That's right. This one's for you, kid. Anyway, moving on, he knows who he is. Uh, supporter of the channel, and I always appreciate that. Let's kind of get the extras off here and start going to that robot mode. So what is sad yet hysterical to me is that going from this mode back to robot is actually the easier way to go. And I've actually started to try and do this conversion a few times, but I keep taking the figure like off screen and um, not meaning to, so... If this looks like it's sort of spliced and edited together a bit, it is. Not because it's hard, just because I haven't been paying attention when I really should be paying attention to what you guys are seeing. So, we're going to try this again. Like I said, it is not the most challenging of conversions when you go from this back to robot. So we begin by taking these off the sides. Okay, so far so good. I haven't, I haven't taken them out of frame yet. We'll see how this goes. We take down the bumper on the front and we can pick up the hood and the windshield and you can kind of lift that up over for now. We can open this piece up and open on the other side, do the same thing and open it out. On the leg, we have a little rectangular slot. There's a little rectangular peg on the fender piece that goes into the slot on the leg. I find that when you're going from robot to vehicle mode, it's a good idea to kind of put your hand up behind the thigh and as you push this in, make sure it slots into that section on the leg. Uh, a lot of people don't do that and they say, I can't change it into vehicle mode. Nothing tabs in. It does, but you have to know where it's tabbing in and you have to realize it's a really tight tolerance in order to get that to actually work. Come to the back and open it out and start to lift that up just a little bit. And right now we sort of have everything kind of apart for this guy. Really the way he is seated is his legs are going underneath him. He's sort of bent at the waist in with his arms up over the top of his head. That's basically what we have. Now, that being said, since we have this apart, we can start to lift up his entire upper body. See what I mean? Like, he's just, he's just sitting down. He's just sitting down. No problem. I'm going to kind of back things up a bit so that we have more room to work here now that we're this far along and he is starting to go out of frame again. Okay, so now at this point we should be able to come here to the sides and kind of bring the backpack up over and you see his arms are here up over his head and you can kind of see how his body is at this point. We can 
take the shoulders and arms out to the side. We can fold down the little, I don't know what you call it, like uh, window piece there. And we can sort of straighten up the arms and shoulders a bit. Here at this backpack piece, we fold this in. We fold this down inside. We bring the hood and windshield up over. Now we're gonna be able to basically straighten him up at the waist. Like that. Now he is gonna the screen again, but we'll deal with his legs here at the moment. You take the leg and you turn it so that this panel comes to the back of the leg. You straighten out his foot, you straighten out his foot, you bring this down, and you bring this down. And now the guy will be able to stand up. Of course, we have to deal with the end of his upper body before we have him finished. And of course, this is what we have now. So if you haven't done it already, you can bring the shoulders down and bring the shoulders down. You can also reach up underneath here and get it. Fold out his hand and come over here and if you can get it. Fold out his hand. You might want to turn at the bicep so that we have elbows actually facing forward. We have two dreads that come down there and we have two dreads that come down on this side. That can come up over. Oop. That can come up over his back and then we have these last ones that come down over his back and in the end really for better or worse for right around boom here we have crankcase in his robot mode very slight oversight here but before i can actually declare him done there is one more transformation step the windshield and hood here can actually flatten out on his back there now he is in his robot mode so for right or wrong, we have the dude here. Uh, look, here's the thing. It does not look like Crankcase. The only reason that it's called Crankcase is because it's a dread. Because he has gold dreads. Uh, which, like I said, I think is a distinguishing feature. But in terms of being accurate to the character, it's not. Which is surprising for the studio series since they kind of... Since it's kind of a line that prides itself on being hyper-accurate. That being said, do I actually like the Berserker mold better than this? No. And the truth is, in converting this guy in both directions, I do find that the tolerances work a little bit better on this guy. I do find that uh, I'm not having the same level of difficulty tabbing stuff in or untabbing stuff or having pieces pop off. I do even find that his ability to hold his accessories is the best of the trio. In fact, this guy might very well be the best of the bunch. Maybe this is the version of the mold we always should have had. That being said, I'm going to grade him when we see him kind of in comparison with his other two cohorts. So here we have all three. And right here we have Crowbar. On the far end we have Berserker. And for paint apps, I said that Berserker was a 10. He looks like the movie. Crowbar was at eight and a half. He's pretty close. I want to say that Crankcase is an eight because it looks cool but truth is he's only about a four at best because yeah he looks like a dread but he doesn't look like crankcase he just doesn't if you know the character so i'm go honestly i think i'm being generous when i say four it looks like a dread it does not look like crankcase articulation for the berserker i said that the articulation was a nine man i must have been in a good mood because his head pops off it probably shouldn't have been a nine it probably should have been about an eight and a half crowbar i said was an eight truth is because his head doesn't pop off, he should probably be a little higher. In their own way, both figures are probably about an eight and a half. Crankcase, probably the exact same, about an eight and a half. The head is on a ball joint, looks up, down, left, right. The shoulders are on ball joints. They can go all the way around 360 degrees. They can go well out, like, I'll show it here with this guy since I have him here. Well, you can see, they can go well out from his body. He has an elbow to 90 degrees. There's a bicep swivel. Uh, the waist there is there a waist joint on this mold I don't think so no there's no waist joint on the mold if crowbar doesn't have a waist joint then crankcase doesn't have a waist joint 
Uh, the hips, they can go out respectably far. There's a, a fantastic ability to do high kicks forward and back. There's a thigh swivel. There's a knee to 90 degrees. Stands like a champion. Uh, I do think that the legs of the crowbar crankcase mold is better done than the legs of the berserker mold um, because they can stand better than berserker. Berserker, you need to sort of find a sweet spot for them. Uh, it's good articulation, eight and a half like the other ones. Then we come to the transformation. I had said that the transformation for crowbar here was about a five to a six, or so five and a half. I said the transformation for berserker was about a five and a half. What about for Crankcase, uh, actually I would say it's about a six and a half because I do find that it is the best tolerance use of this mold, at least my own individual copy. That may just have been luck on my part. It may be, in essence, about a five and a half like the other ones. Here's the bottom line. I think mildly, just mildly, that Crankcase is the best use of this body type and of this mold. Crowbar overall I said was a 7. Berserker overall I said was a 6. I would say that Crankcase overall is about a 7.5 because he's not quite as frustrating to transform. Or, or, admittedly, maybe I've just gotten more experienced with the conversion and learned a couple of tricks of how to do it along the way. While I think he is just barely better than the other two uses, truth be told, if you didn't like Berserker and you didn't like Crowbar, you're not going to like Crankcase. These will not be the dreads for you. If you are all right with Berserker, you're all right with Crowbar, then they, then this Crankcase, I, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. If you're not planning to convert them and you just want them for display, I think, honestly, as you know, demonstrated by this little trio right here, I think they look fantastic together. They look like a cohesive and vicious group, and isn't that exactly what the dreads are supposed to be? And here we are once again, and here he is, and while it is not accurate to the character of Crankcase from the movies at all, let alone the G1 character of Crankcase, it's a pretty cool dread, and I don't think that cutting the pieces off hurt the look of his dreadlocks. Doesn't to me. They're still plenty of dreadlock there. I'm fine with it, and it doesn't stick out now in his alt mode, and I, doesn't, and I don't have to tuck it away. I do find that the tolerances on this guy, it's almost like they've been tweaked just by micrometers, and I might have just lucked out with a good copy of the mold. That being said, the improvement of the tolerances is so minor that I don't think it's going to magically make you like this guy if you didn't like the earlier use. If you like the earlier use, I don't think there's anything here that you're going to dislike. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I'm glad to have him. I can absolutely understand why somebody wouldn't want him. And if you have the earlier uh, movie version of Crankcase, do you need to upgrade to this guy? I don't, I don't think so. But I never had that earlier version. So this, this kind of works for me and my collection. Uh, I think the trio so far looks great. And I kind of look forward to having Hatchet sort of down in front of the trio. Anyway, that being said, first and foremost... Though I've mentioned it right throughout the video here, shout out to Lewis. Um, what can I say? I was talking to the guys. I told them that in episode 516, I was going to shout you out and do it kind of as a surprise. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know if it was creepy or if it was funny. To most people, it wouldn't mean anything because they don't know you, but I do. Um, anyway, what can I say? Thanks for being a part of the community. And thanks to everyone for being a part of the community. Let me know what you guys think about this guy. Do you like him? Do you not like him? As always, you know that I appreciate you dropping by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I know how important it is to you, and I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.